Yeah, should we get into intros? Welcome to Design Lab. We only got a couple people here. I think we're expecting a little lower attendance. I know that the heart walk is going on. We just got over uh, a lot of events here. We had a crazy month. Um, in fact, uh, more about that in a second, but uh, welcome to Design Lab. Um, Design Lab is, uh, is a virtual workshop for uh, uh, all of Gladstonians uh, for ongoing training and support on a wide range of design, science illustration projects. We're here again on uh, optimizing your publications for slides, yet another uh, slide related demo. Hopefully we'll be getting out of this zone <laughs> sometime in the near future uh, and get into some science illustration kind of projects that might be kind of fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, as I was saying, we've had a crazy week um, with some major events going on and uh, we had just got up last sessions um, YouTube video on there. So sorry about that delay on that. Hopefully that won't happen uh, moving forward. But um, yeah, this is going to be recorded and posted to YouTube afterwards. Uh, format is informal and meeting format. Um, feel free to jump in with questions in the Q&A, the chat, you know, break out into uh, and come out on screen uh, or pop up on screen and, um, and jump on the mic. Um, and what else, Tammy? What else is going on? Are we ready to do this? I think this is the first one where you're starting. Yes. Wow, I, I've got terrible echo. Oh, no. <laughs> I need to take that off. Okay, yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah this is the first one where you're kind of taking the lead a bit and starting off, and so I'm excited about that. Yeah. And also, I've been doing this forever, and I still always learn stuff in these sessions, so I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I am definitely learning from each other and also a few comments from, from folks chiming in. So that's yeah. always, um, that's actually the, you know, this real spirit of this thing, you know, that we actually get to talk about things. We, we can fumble through things together. We can have discussions about things. Um, you know, it's not meant to be a, a sort of polished thing, clearly. In <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's jump in. Um, so uh, what is this session all about? Um, Let's see, what did we advertise this as? Um, so we're going to be talking about ways to import, you know, the crisp vector il illustration graphics uh, into a PowerPoint. Um, we've gone over that a couple of times in the past couple of episodes. I'm going to do it again here, showing a couple of other features that we haven't gone over. Then I'll hand it over to Tammy, who will um, show uh, another nuanced element of um, importing, importing graphics and also um, a little bit of animation fun. Next time, next episode, I think we're really going to jump into some animation stuff, which uh, we have some cool stuff planned for that too. Um, but for the time being, let's uh, go ahead, see if I can share everything that's going on on my screen, which is always scary. Here we go. So um, here I am with my, uh, with my clean, crisp, cleaned up uh, vector graphic that I have created and formatted for uh, publication. And you can see I have it on this artboard that is letter size, ready for that pub and, and formatted for uh, panel placement. And these are sort of um, uh, set up and geared for being able to be, you know, really modular in that. This is obviously not a figure, but they are, they're sort of in that, in that format and ready to go. But now I'm done with that paper. I've submitted it. Now I'm going on my talking roadshow with and reporting all my data. Um, and uh, I want to get this into PowerPoint. So I, I can come right back to this file and I'm going to come in here and um, and uh, what I can do is I can I, I can sort of assess at this point whether or not I'm optimized for placement in uh, in PowerPoint. Um, and uh, you know this uh, that that can be like, okay, am I might. Are, are the colors correct? Am I going on a black background? Am I going on a white background? For this demo purposes, let's just say that I'm switching to a, a white background or I'm, I'm converting these over to a white background. So no real modification needed, but this is the time where it's um, that's perfect to kind of assess those things. Um, uh, so uh, what I can do is I can go ahead and just um, highlight this entire section. You can use the direct or the object select tool um, and uh, just drag over, grab this whole thing. And um, I'm going to hit, um, I'm going to go with an option that I've showed you guys already, um, but I think is a sort of tried and true for met method for me. It's a real no nonsense method in that um, basically you don't have to go through an intermediary period of creating a file 
that then you're going to import into it. You can just go directly from one file to the other with a copy and a paste. So I've selected the whole thing and I'm going to hit Command C for a copy and I'm going to swap over to my PowerPoint application. And I'm going to switch off of this and go to my link. How about that? Okay. So I've started in this template and I'm just going to go, this is actually the template that um, we shared this out, right? This, yep. uh, yeah. So uh, we shared this out and we'll communicate this out more widely as uh, time goes on. But um, these are new templates that are set up for, um, for specifically for scientific presentations. And we, you can see here as we've got several layouts uh, for black background and white background. I'm just going to select a white, uh, blank white background version at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in, but I'm not going to do a standard paste. Of course, I'm going to do a paste special. Um, so on a Mac, that's command control V, or you can go up here into the um, edit paste special. Um, and here I'm going to select from this list. It'll give me this prompt and I'm going to select PDF. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. And what this is, is basically pasting the vector graphic itself. And um, uh, as a PDF, and it's retaining all that vector um, data. So that that's really ideal because I can select this. It's, it's non-resolution dependent. And I can scale it to the exact size that I need. And I know it's always going to stay crisp no matter how big I make it. So the reason why I can't leave it this way, and I won't, is because Illustrator, or excuse me, PowerPoint um, is very selective on what it likes about um, placing vector graphics. Uh, and I think, and I, this is not proven or definitive from you know, uh, Microsoft or anything, but it, it has to do with the complexity of it. And I think there's a, a tipping point in which it will uh, rasterize an image and it does not do a very good job converting that in the effort. Uh, and, and it also is not predictable about what graphics it'll grab and what it won't. So a fail safe for this is that um, I, will, I will convert this once it's scaled to size uh, now to a raster image. And the, it's real easy. Um, I, and I bet there's more ways to do this as there oftentimes is in this, uh, in these applications, but, um, I like the options that you get from just, um, a cut and a paste. So I just pasted this graphic in here, but I'm going to cut it once again, um, now that I've set it at scale. So I'm going to go in here and hit command X or cut, and I'm going to hit, uh, the paste special, just as I did last time. This time it gives me slightly different options. And at this point, I have these two raster options available and I can choose either TIFF or JPEG. I prefer TIFF at this point because um, that's gonna give me, uh, it's not gonna be as compressed um, and also allows for transparency. I'll show you the difference here. So if I paste that TIFF, I have a nice transparent background. If I paste as a JPEG, it does not support transparency. So I have a white box around it. Hey, Giovanni, uh, yeah. sorry, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, um, yeah. I wonder if maybe you can do that one more time after you finish this demo. Basically, he selected the, um, the figure from Illustrator. So just a straight copy, right, from Illustrator, and then you paste special in PowerPoint. There's yes. a little confusion. Oh, very good, yeah. So I, I'm selecting, Illustrator. yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I'm in Illustrator. I'm working with my vector graphics. I am copying in here. So yes, you can copy and paste from application to application. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm hitting Command C or going up Edit, Copy. Yep. And then I am swapping applications and I'm going into PowerPoint. You know, the reverse also happens too, which is also very convenient. If you get some slides and somebody's pasted in as, um, as a sort of PowerPoint is the lowest common denominator graphic application um, for a lot of folks, they'll end up sort of compiling or putting together graphics in there. Well, you might not realize this, but if you're working and you're adept at, you know, working in um, in Illustrator as your application, you can just go in and grab an artboard, grab all the, um, you know, like Command A, select all, copy and paste that in Illustrator. And oftentimes, uh, You'll you'll be able to um, retain any vector information that's um, that was originally in that, or you're just you can just basically transfer all that information into Illustrator and start moving forward in that. Way. But um, but we're going the opposite way here now, and we're pasting in uh, into PowerPoint. Just so what happens if you didn't do paste special? If you just did paste, if I just did paste, that's a great question. Um, then I get the the 
like basically all, all the, the text. text. Yeah, okay. that's kind of like a you get what PowerPoint sort of assumes it wants um, or you want. Um, so hitting pay special offers like a, the basically they're giving you the unformatted text, which is this first option here. But with pay special, you can actually denote exactly what kind of file you wanted to paste that. Because it's it's grabbing all that information, and uh, and thankfully both applications are sophisticated enough that they can parse out that in different. So I don't know if Anker wants to come off mic, but did that help clarify for you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, uh, so yeah. So where were we? We we were. Um, so I pasted. Uh, I pasted as a PDF. I sized it to the what I want to my target size, and um, and then I actually cut it out of out of PowerPoint and pasted it back in special as the target um, format that I want as a as a raster format. So now it's you know now you've got your your uh, your very specified and um, uh, targeted optimized. Uh, image for that. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, scaling, overscaling something that it wasn't actually intended to be. Um, if we look at the picture format, for example, uh, under size, you can see this is scaled to 100% at this scale, and I can start reducing it down. Reducing is always more preferable to enlarging because you're just going to start seeing those pixels, those interpolations, um, which is what you want. So that works out really great for, I'd say, like, you know, um, 70, 70 to 80% of the my workflow when I'm converting over um, data into a PowerPoint slide. But um, it's not always optimal for, you know, when you're wanting to do some something more complicated. Let me, um, let me show you what I mean by that. So um, say that you wanted to actually step through or maybe... Um, parse out some of this data so that way it's um, you can you can do uh, like a, a PowerPoint build where you can kind of create different stages of the same slide where you're introducing uh, uh, you know data elements in it you know through various steps. So uh, with that, you know it's you know trying to come in through here and designate you know all the different elements always gets a little bit uh, you know, because it's happening in this liminal space between, uh, you know, Illustrator and PowerPoint, where you're like, I'm on, I have all my data on my clipboard, I can't really keep track of it. It's less ideal. So instead, let's go back here and actually set up the file and and prepare those elements to then import directly into um, Illustrator or into PowerPoint. And where you want to start there is because it's going to be um, because it's much easier uh, to understand scale and and um, and resolution. Um, when you're looking at the actual uh, target uh, uh, file size, I'm going to resize my artboard. So right now I'm on letter size. That's fine and dandy for printing in the letter, but I'm going to convert this over to um, a PowerPoint size. So I'm going to I'm going to go in here into my artboard settings, um, go on this little uh, fun little icon here for artboard options, and now you can see it's marqueed, and I'm I'm, I'm going to be able to adjust my artboard. And um, I could go in here to one of these preset presets, but um, I'm not quite certain that I see or understand um, which one is going to be a, a direct um, uh, scale of, that I want in PowerPoint. What I do know in PowerPoint is that it's 13.33 inches wide and 7.5 inches high. So I know I can enter that in here too with these variables. So I can go in here, and, and this is a little known trick um, that you can enter in the um, the unit mm. of that, um, and you you can sort of disregard. You don't have to worry about what it's in. So I know that the width is going to be thirteen point three three inches, and I'll just type in inches, and then I'll tab to the next one, ah. and it already converts. You can see the mm -hmm. points, and I'm going to say seven point five inches, and tab over, and so I am also going to set my reference point to that center, so that way it it it, it doesn't go off skewed, um, and then I'm going to say okay. So here I am with my artboard that's now I now the size um, of a slide. And I'm going to go in here and um, immediately scale things up here. And I'm going to scale these together because I'm going to presumably use them together. So I might as well just do that all now. But I'm going to concentrate mostly on this. And do you have any idea what the height would be if you took into account that slide title? 
Oh, um, good question. But you know what? I'm less worried about that at this point. And I'll show you why. Is that I'm going to, I always am a fan of like rough, you know, guesstimating. This is a great guesstimation of like uh, how size, uh, how large I want it. But very similar to what I did when I was working in PowerPoint is that I'm only, I'm going to scale it. Um, I'm going to overscale it. I'm going to make it a little bit larger than what I know I'm going to need it at. So that's why I just, I don't need to know the details of that. All I know is that that PowerPoint slide is that tall. And I want to make sure that I'm, uh, that at most, you know, I'm, I can be like the full height of that. I'm not going to necessarily going to want to go the full width. Right. Um, so yeah, I'll just roughly scale this in place like this, say, call this good. And now at this point, I, what I want to do is I want to figure out, okay, what are the elements that I'm going to isolate in there? Um, and basically, uh, I know, or I, I'm, I, what I'm going to want is I want to want, I want to establish with the graph and also with like, um, you know, a data set. Um, so the graph itself, I'm going to go in here and selectively come in here and grab all the elements that are um, basically just the, the, uh, the graph uh, field. And I'm going to grab these. I'm going to. I'm going to do this little thing. And I always do this uh, is a weird little quirk that I learned a long time ago when it was probably a feature that didn't exist, but um, I'm going to use the direct select tool, but that, that sort of always introduces an issue where there's something that didn't get, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. enveloped in that. Right. So um, I, you saw that I moved it um, and I just kind of undid to bring it back, but I'm going to redo that and undo it again. And immediately everything gets selected. That's okay. Wild. I don't know how I came across that, but I always do this. So you probably see me do it at some point, uh -huh. but that, um, but that way I can make sure that I can just capture. Um, I, I'm not, I don't have these stray points that aren't selected. And that comes important when you're like grouping things or when you're uh, cutting and pasting things, you won't get these little vestigial elements left behind um, if, if a dot isn't selected. So there's a real purpose for that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I am gonna group all these elements. So I hit Command G to group or object group. Um, and then uh, I can look here in my layers palette to verify it. Move all these view guys. Wonderful zoom. Um, I'm gonna look at my layers palette and see where I'm at now. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. So I can see, I'm gonna reorganize my layers palette. So this all the way to the top. Oh, it looks like there's green. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. This mm -hmm. might be, oh, this is this is because I got several artboards. So you're seeing a lot, oh, okay. of, seeing a lot yep. of stuff. Okay, so here we are. We're on this one here. <laughs> um, so you can see it's a uh, sit here at the top of this grouping. And now I've got this background. So now I'm gonna go into my artboards, or my, excuse me, my, um, uh, my asset export panel. So if you don't see this um, where you're working, just go up into window, go to asset asset ex export, and um, you'll see this kind of open up and you can uh, drag and drop elements right directly in here. Um, you can drag and drop in there, or you can also hit these icons. And um, so one of this is uh, generate multiple assets from the selection. So based on your groupings, based on how you've, um, uh, how many objects you have selected here, you can you can hit this button and it'll create uh, individual objects based on all of those things. Um, but if you have everything kind of grouped together, uh, it actually will just um, consider it all one object. So um, that's the same thing, essentially, if you hit generate a single asset um, from this selection, you'll also just get, you know, whatever this, um, so let's try this, let me do this as a demo. If I've got two objects selected, Yeah, let's see if I can get this to work out separately. Coco had a question about yeah. your um, move and undo twice to group. Yeah. That's just because you want to, you're using that direct selection. It is. Tool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me demo what that, what that really means here. So I've got a direct select tool versus like the object select tool. If I have the object select tool, that, that can, it can't get me in trouble, but it's less efficient sometimes because if I have things grouped, and I have the object select tool, it'll select everything in that grouping. 
right? And then I have to sort of try to drill into that and I can do an isolation mode. I can finally get to it, but it's um, sometimes I just want to grab that one object. Um, and, and oftentimes there's just like, you know, there's so much going on in there and you really want to select, you know, a specific thing. You can just hit the direct select tool on a single point and boom, you've got your thing, but you don't quite have it yet. So if I wanted to move this object at this point, if I hit a nudge, it moves just that point. And I don't want that. I want to move the entire thing. But how do you get that entire thing? I don't want to go around here and select each point. And this point is actually hidden under here. So if I try to move that again, it's like, oh, I missed that point. I don't want to play that game, <laughs> right? So instead, I'm going to do my, my little, uh, you know, I want to convert that to the whole object immediately selected. And a way to do that is move it, unmove it, uh, you know, move and, or redo and undo again. And then miraculously, the whole thing is selected. I don't know. It's a weird. So you're just like reaching deep into a group without, you know, yes, directly. Yeah. By choosing the tool that it lets you pick individual points. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm a big fan of also like the lasso tool and all of that too. Um, but you know, these are all different means to select, but as I've always, uh, you know, said about all these applications, it's always about the name of the game is figuring out how to select everything you want um, and isolate that one thing. That's uh, where you just get so much more efficiency. Okay, cool. So, um, gosh, how are we doing on time? One five after. Well, I'm really burning it. Yeah, okay. go for it though. Go okay, for it. okay, we're having fun. Yeah. Okay, so um, basically, where was I? So I was trying to set up separate assets here, but man, it wasn't behaving. Let's see if I can get it to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab I'm going to grab three objects. These are already set up in groups because I'm constantly. That's I'm constantly organizing yep. uh, my files, uh, grouping and ungrouping, and and doing that to be able to get um, and make things do the you know and and for efficiency purposes. So um, so I'm just like going to paste this above all other sort of groupings. So this is this is sort of disassociated with these now. These are just three random objects, and I'm selected in here. And um, let's just delete these guys. Get that all cleared. And if I hit this um, generate separate objects button finally because it's outside that group it now recognizes these as three separate objects so i don't have to drag each one individually in um, this is how you can get um, basically three objects ready for export you know real quick um, the other option is hitting this um this button which just says generate a single asset from this and if i hit that it does exactly as advertised and i just got all i got this cluster with this exact orientation all ready. So that's essentially what um, what we're going to be doing here. You can um, you can now use that knowledge um, to then build out how you want to export all these elements, mm -hmm. right? You could select um, all these uh, these purple dots, you know, um, all on one grouping, all the blue ones on a separate grouping, um, the labeling, you know, appropriate for each one of them, and then you could like um, bring that over into this um, uh, into this export panel. But let's see, I'm going to keep it kind of simple and just kind of add in uh, rather than step in. I'm going to skip ahead, and try to simplify this. I'll do the um, the field of the of the graph first. Um, I will do uh, the key separate. And then I will set out with all the data. So what now that I've selected that now, I, I you know, I want to select only the data. Um, and so I'm going to hide this guy. So command three is hide. I'm sure it's in here. Yes, object hide selected artwork. Um, but I'm going to hit Command three to hide that now. Um, I know that I've grouped together um, just these elements here for the uh, the field of the graph and the labeling. So I'm going to select that as a group and hit Command three to hide those elements. And now I've isolated this um, this set of labels and also the the data itself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Well. Does that work with just a selection, or does it have to be a group? Hmm. Uh, say that again. Could you like, just you... select? Are you selecting and then um, exporting, or do you have to make it a group first? Oh, you can select, and it doesn't need to be a group. If it is a group, then that basically does um, what uh, what these buttons kind of what these different buttons do for you. So if you create a group, then it everything will be exported in this export pane uh -huh. as a group. Okay. And if, uh, and yeah, and if uh, they're outside of group, then you have that selection through these buttons to be grouped or ungrouped, or excuse me, 
uh, bulked or separate. Yeah. Also notice this, that when I hid those objects, um, they disappeared in this asset pane. And that's, um, we'll make them reappear so that way we see them, but the asset pane is um, basically as you see it now for the, um, uh, for its current view. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I selected all these guys and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create another set of assets here. And now, as I said, I'm gonna make those reveal. Um, so I'm gonna hit command option three to the reveal them. Again, that's gonna be under object um, uh, command three or unhide. I'm sure there's not right? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, so now I've got these three, um, these three elements set up. Um, the one thing I don't have is a reference point um, for these objects. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna know where I'm gonna place these, but, um, but I could always, I, I can always come back here and reference this. Um, nobody's gonna get out a ruler and kind of measure these. Um, so I'm not too worried because there are a lot of different points uh, that I can kind of reference these when I get them in the PowerPoint. So here from this point, I can select PNG. That's um, again, a good uh, format for that. Uh, it's, it's a loss less mm -hmm. format. It's not as compressed or lossy format as JPEGs are. Um, they're excellent for vector graphics. They'll make a nice small file size. And the extra bonus on top of that is they allow for transparency. So I'm going to say PNG, which is actually a, a better format than PNG8, which is a more legacy format. Um, so selecting PNG, and um, I'm going to set my resolution. Um, and uh, I'm going to set that at, what do we say, Tammy? You could say about, um, you know, 100 PPI for, because it'll be only on screen, mm -hmm. but you could give yourself a little extra room and say maybe 150. That's what I used to always do, yeah. Yeah, maybe 200. I used to always do 220. I have no idea why I came up with that. Also, if you print, if you ever need yeah. to print from the slides, it's it's like splitting the difference between screen and the yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Yeah, you give yourself a little wiggle room there because you never know. Maybe you're going to show these as a PDF. Maybe you want them printable as a PDF. Yeah, that's what you um, Is there a reason why you chose PDF over PNG last time for copy and pasting? Yes. The, the reason for the, all of that is that you, um, you, can, um, you can skip all this planning phase. Um, and if you're just kind of running and gunning, trying to move things over and get the job done, then it is the it's the most immediate and and um, efficient way to get your data over there without resolution loss. So um, it's it's a it's a vector format that PowerPoint recognizes, and you can paste into. And at that point, you can scale and do all of your sort of scaling in PowerPoint, which is uh, visually very intuitive. Right, you can see exactly what scale it is. You can say, oh, that looks good at that point. That's as big as I want it. And then you can convert it over to a raster format in there. So um, that answers. So now at this point, I can hit export, and it's going to prompt me to tell me where I want them. I'm going to say I'll just put it on my desktop for right now. That's where I usually dump. That's my work process to just dump it there. Me too. Yeah, that way I can just um, go through and just delete that stuff later. Um, and now I'm back in PowerPoint here, and I'm going to go to my. Uh, desktop, grab these items and just drop them in here. And let's see those. Let me redo that. So grab them all at the same time. They have different. They have different canvas sizes, right? Uh, PowerPoint. No, your elements that you're bringing together, like so that you have to manually place them, right? Reassemble them. Yes, you do have to ram manually reassemble them. And that's what I was kind of alluding to before. Like right. I don't, I, I'd want a reference point. Right, exactly. Um, so this, like I said, I think um, for, you know, I mean, you want to be careful, obviously, this is scientific data, right. it's not a right. joke, you're not messing around. But um, but I think also it's, uh, there's, you can get, you can get very, um, uh you know, you can really zoom in and kind of like get that to line up exactly. Um, also, there's, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, reference points for tick marks, you know, they're, you're not going to measure against anyway. So I, I, I sweat it to a point where it's going to be like, okay, that is definitely accurate, um, but it's not necessarily, uh, you know, it's not what you're submitting to the journal. So that way people can repeat your data or whatever. It's, not, it's, 
um, it's within a margin of error that is very small, but um, you know. So. Um, so, uh, or you could actually print export with some diagnostic point along with it. That's also an, uh, another way, that, you know, something that maybe a point that um, that will be hidden, but it'll line up to these to these zero points on these axes. So that's another thing. I am trying to find my selection pane. Here we are, and I'm going to move this guy to the back so I can select these other objects. And now I've got my key here, which I can have in here. I can move out. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've got options with that guy. I have got my data set here, which I can line up and I can even reference this one that's over here um, to the left. I can say, okay, this is gonna fit, you know, I wanna get that point on the, that x-axis and um, this one is gonna sit just about there. That's actually looking pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then I'll reorganize this so that way, um, make sure that I'm gonna be in front of these two, uh, um, axes markers and um yeah so if i move this guy to the side then you can see i've got this set up and i will also do the same thing as i would in illustrate i'll group these guys together so that's command option g in powerpoint so that way i can now those are moving together as one and now i've got the i've got you know some variability here and i can also use that same method to bring in you know separate elements as i said separate data elements and and I can make a build through that. So I'm in use. Cool. So, so a lot of questions, Serena. Does anyone anyone want to come off mic or on mic or off mute? Yeah. And, and and any final questions? And also just to reiterate, yeah, this is going to be this is re being recorded. This will be posted. Yep. And I said <laughs> we just got the last one up um, yesterday. I think it was. So uh, this one should be coming up much sooner than that. But we had a crazy incident. Cool. Tammy, should I hand it over to you? I have just one question. So you're kind okay. of separating these things out so that you can do what exactly? Like, what would you do with this? Yeah. So at this point, now I can create like a simple animation with it, right? So let me just demonstrate that yeah. real fast. Let me ungroup these elements. That's command option shift G to ungroup those guys or going up to uh, uh, arrange. Yes, ungroup. Um, again, grouping and ungrouping is your best friend, uh, especially for organizing all this stuff. Um, so say I've got these three elements um, and um, I want to introduce them uh, maybe for effect, maybe to actually build out some stimulants that I want the audience to be concentrating on. And when I want them to hit this, I don't necessarily want them to be, um, you know, maybe viewing all the elements, but I don't want to introduce color or something like that. And at this point now, because they are separate objects, I can go ahead and do that. So. Um, if I go up to animation, I can just go ahead and introduce a, I don't know what your favorite style is, but mine is fade. I always recommend that. <laughs> um, and I can pull up my animation pane so I can see that this is uh, sequential. Let's have to twirl these down. PowerPoint never likes you to work super efficiently. You do the most clicks to get everything done. So um, when I'm in here, I just want this to be not with previous, but on click. Um, so that way they're both on click. And then we can see how this sort of plays out. Move zoom elements around. All right, so then I can introduce each element individually, like as you, as you would with it. Um, so you can imagine how this would play out with like the different data points coming in um, sequentially. Um, and, you know, obviously I made this, the key come in, but I would probably just have the, the graph itself, the key come in and then you, but you could start to see how you can play around with, um, pacing your audience's experience to really reflect where you want them in it. Um, so that's, that's really the advantage. And speaking of which, I think you've got a good example. Yeah. Any questions before we switch over? We'll go ahead and. I was I had so much attention to what you were doing that I didn't even open the file. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to demo something that I did um, just recently uh, for um, the GIND 25th presentation. 
Uh, am I sharing my entire desktop? You are. Yeah. Cool, because I don't see that little green thing. Okay, I see something in the chat. Yeah, it's awesome tricks thing. Oh, which cool. Is very nice. Yes, yeah. they are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, let me. So there was this. Uh, this is a, our publication figure that we're going to look at that we um, that I converted to a slide. And the um, what they wanted to do was just use sort of half of this. And so typically, this this whole thing actually would fit nicely on a slide, right? But if we're only doing half of it, um, then we have something that's much taller than it is wide. And as we know, slides are wider than they are tall. So a um, couple of things I did to sort of make this happen. Um, I'm also going to show you, I'm going to use the dark slides in the so um, really quickly, I'll just, I think you might have demoed this last one of the other times, but I'll quickly go through and show how we would convert something like this to something that would work on the black background. And then I'll go ahead and bring that in and show the technique that we chose to use so that we could sort of drill down into the data of something that was really tall um, on a slide, which is less tall. So for this kind of workflow, Giovanni, I don't know how you work, but I would go ahead and add a new layer that's black. Um, so I'm an illustrator, in case um, that wasn't clear. Uh, and I'm going to just do a couple oh, nice. things to my figure and then take it in. So okay. this is kind of, I'll make this little black background to help me. Um, I'll lock it here. And then as you can see, all of my black text disappeared. But I want to turn that into white text before I bring it on the slide. So um, let me hide that. And then um, my trick is always just to so go select something, go up to select. Select the same fill color since the text is filled. And then I'm just going to change it to white and then it's gone. But if I turn my little layer on, I can go, it's still there. And this is how it's going to look on my slide. Um, and then I will just do a couple mother rounds of that to sort of change the, um, the lines here. So select same stroke color this time, make that white. And then these little things. Giovanni, this is a figure that you actually originated. Mm -hmm. These are, aren't long rectangles, they're fat lines. So I'm going to select the same stroke again, and I'm just going to um, I'm gonna make these grayscale and then turn on my black background. And then I, the, I want these to fade into the background, so I, I'm going to choose like a dark gray. Almost unintuitively, like you go darker with that, which actually makes them lighter on the back background. Yeah, yeah. yep, for sure. Um, and then let's see, we, we want to get rid of this half, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff that I don't want. Oops, looks like I got a couple of groups. Um, so we just wanted this half. And now, as you can see, it's uh, really tall. You got rid of the key there, but I would oh, just keep on you. going. Just keep on going. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we get it. <laughs> but somebody's okay. got to call us. Alex Pico isn't here this week, but he would be like, you forgot the key. He would. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate those comments. Uh, yes, I do. When you're moving fast, right? I appreciate you, Alex Pico. Yeah, he's not here, but we appreciate yeah. him. Um, okay, so this is sort of roughly what I want. Um, there's a couple other things. Let's see. I do have a half-baked cake here, if I can open that up, um, where I have a, this already of modified. So see, I remembered my key in this yeah, version. Of course it did. One other thing I wanted to show really quickly is that um, I did some different grouping. So I grouped each of these rows, if you will, right? Um, so that I could get a little more spacing in my final um, figure oh. that I'm bringing to Hogwarts. I like that. Yeah. So this is where I didn't want you to watch the pain of me doing all of that. It's very painstaking. <laughs> um, but all worth it. You put in oh, a little work. For but, sure. Yeah. Then you get the exactness. Yep. So uh, I can nudge these things down a little bit, and then I can pull this one down. And then I'm just going to select all of these and go over to the Align panel. And I'm just going to change their distribution. Now, I had to be really careful when I was making these groups to be sure that I was selecting the right ones that were sort of positioned on a row. Yeah. Um, but I want to get more spacing, and you'll see why in a second. So. All right, so then I'm ready to um, export. So I could do what Giovanni did, where I copy from Illustrator, go over to PowerPoint, paste special, 
I did a little test earlier and actually for what I'm going to show you, it, it looked better if I just exported as a PNG. So that's what I'm gonna do. As a super res PNG. Actually. Yes, so I'm gonna do file export as, oh, I wanna turn off my layer that's got the black. File export, export as, I'm gonna, um, I wanna use my artboard, I wanna use a PNG. And then I get over here and I wanted to check transparent and I'm gonna do 300. And then I'm gonna go over to PowerPoint um, and I'm going to, um, so this is what it would look like if I just wanted to pop that in and not convert it to looking um, really good on a black background. So that's okay, but we're gonna do something that's a little bit cooler. So here's my title. I'm gonna, I'm using the template, so I'm gonna use this placeholder and I'm going to, if you didn't see, I chose the one with the little monitor that picks something from the computer. And then I'm going to uh, choose this one. And then I, I went over this really briefly when we talked about our templates. If you um, populate something into a picture placeholder, it will stay the same size and your image will be scaled inside it. If it's one of these sort of multi-purpose placeholders, it'll um, shrink down and it's, frustrating, but it's also giving you the flexibility to use that placeholder for text or anything else. So um, so here is our here is our figure. It's and can, still, hey, Tammy, can yeah. you go into the, the object, into the uh, format picture pane, into the object size? Mm -hmm. And we can look at that. And you can see that you just scaled that up, and that's only 170. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I did the export at 300. DPI. Yeah. I'm going to just copy this. Um, by title so that I have a more accurate title over here. And as you can see, there's not a lot of room. This is why I was asking you about the height given our title, because mm -hmm. sometimes when these titles are two lines long, they take up a lot of space. We could make this a little smaller than 44. Um, if you do that, I just would say, then whatever size that you is, do that on all of your slides so that they're, they're not getting bigger and smaller, your slide titles. As you go through, uh, so let's make that a little bit smaller. Uh, and then I would probably do that. <clears throat> and this, we went over this too with, the, you know, modifying, uh, you, you can modify that in the master. And um, that's where you've got to leverage that, your, your newfound um, skills of modifying masters to really sort of cutting out a lot of work because once you do that, um, it should really um, trickle down to all of the elements that you used throughout it um, rather than having to go through slide by slide and, and modify those things. Yeah, it's a cheat to keep it really consistent. Yeah. So this is my figure and it's still, again, it's really tall. You know, I can't um, can't see the data with a lot of specificity. And it just so happened that for this presentation, they wanted to zoom in to a portion on the bottom, but they wanted to first show the entire figure because of the, the um, scale and some of the context up here. Um, so I used the morph transition. And so uh, ideally, the way the morph works is you have a slide that has everything you want on it, um, and then you duplicate it. So if I still had this selected and I hit duplicate, I would get a duplicate of that. I do that all the time. You want to make sure you have your slide selected, then you duplicate, and then you get a duplicate of your slide. I don't know if that happens to you, Giovanni, but it happens to me every time. So um, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, literally zoom into a section of this. So I did a, two things. I scaled it and I also cropped it. So um, I don't know which is better to do first. We'll just do the scaling. So um, I think we, we wanted to zoom into sort of like starting with this line here. So as you can see, I just scaled it up manually. Now we're, um, we're pretty big, but because I did that PNG, it's pretty crisp. And because it's the, the actual, this is where you get in resolution, which is kind of complicated to talk about and only like 10% of the people <laughs> like really understand it because it is confusing, but you basically, you exported it at a certain size, meaning like uh, say five inches wide, but the resolution was say 300. So there was um, much more pixel density there. So when it's saying reporting 100%, that's at, at the, the intended um, width in inches placed on the canvas, but it is as more pixels per inch in it than it, in it than it would be exported from 
Illustrator and the other method. Yeah. So I exported way higher than I needed so that yeah. I could have that flexibility. That's where that PPI gets comes in. So now I've got two slides. And if I go up to the selection pane, my best friend in the world, um, I can see I have my title, I have this content placement, I have this text, um, and then I have the exact same thing here. So then I'm going to use the morph transition. And you always choose the slide you're transitioning to. Everybody probably already knows that because you transition all the time. And then that was the effect here. And so if you use the morph, it's already got some easing built into it when we do animation. We talk about easing. Uh, and then it also has the duration. I don't know. Let's make it a little quicker. Um, so as you can see, that was a, a quick way to kind of zoom in to a portion of this um, diagram. And yeah, why don't you play it again? Yeah. So it did that. It previewed the first time because yeah. I just built it. Right. If I do it now. I think I have to put it in the slide here. Yeah, you do. So this is what our figure could have been. Totally fine, right? Clean, it suffices. put That's on the there. Job. But then you know we can see what we could do. Are you seeing the right? No, we're not seeing. Yeah. Okay. At least I'm not. No, it's because it reminds. Oh, I see. Let's see. Yeah, you got that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's on the wrong screen. You know what? There's a little button up at top that says. Uh, Swap displays. Yes, yeah, swap displays. Here we are. Yeah, well, we do. We're just going to watch this. Oh, you know what? There is a button that says preview. Okay, let's do which it. Which I think. Uh, Where is that? Um, top left corner. All right. And then. Oh. Uh, now hit preview. Oh, no, you have to select the slide you want to uh, target to. Okay. Yeah. I bet if I share my different Maybe. monitor, I can. Uh... Oh, I see what you mean. So the full effect. Yeah, I know that there is a way that you can actually designate which monitor you're going to, but I don't know how you how to get to that on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Anyway, you can see the power of this transition if you want to use it for something like this. You could do that multiple times and zoom into different areas. Of it. In fact, we did that twice for this presentation. Um, and there were a couple other things I did too. So for example, I can insert, um, I can add some visual cues to this. So I can insert like a rectangle for the part I want to zoom into. So this is like, you know, design 101, right? Like I'm going to I'm going to sort of show you where I'm headed. Maybe I'll take like a red, maybe I'll do no gray. And so, um, oops, that's the blue. Oops, lost my hand. The so, rescue. Yep. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let me make that. So now I've got you know this big fat. I'm going to copy that. See, just your regular little copy. I'm going to paste it onto this slide, and I'm going to put it around this. I'm going to see what that looks like with my transition. Oh, um, you have to be in transitions. You? Yeah, and now go to your target that you want to be going to transition. Yeah. Okay, so I can, you know, so you could maybe add us add that red box as you talk, and then you could switch your slide. Okay. You know, you would start with. Can you um hit Command Plus just to get us a little bit bigger? On the... I remember if Command Zero gets you full screen. There you go. This one. Yeah. yeah that. Okay. So you could start here, then you could add your box, and then you could get your zoom like this. And so the reason I spread those out a little bit more is because when I cropped here, the line above had a Y or something, and it was awfully close to this here. So I needed to spread those out a bit so that I could crop and not see anything that was above it. Yeah, super effective. 
pretty intuitive method for adding animation that um, that the two states are two different slides, which oftentimes when people are creating animations, you don't you can't see that you can't preview the final state of the slide. So um, this is also really great for sharing your slides out, right? People don't have to animate through all the elements to be able to appreciate the sort of stages that information is introduced. So another reason why this is um, using the morph tool for animations that are simple like that. Simple, but actually really complex. Like, and the fact that you can animate a crop into, you can't do that um, with, uh, with the traditional animation pane. Um, and there's uh, all sorts of other fun things, you know, playing with opacities at different key keyframes, you know, the second one, um, you can fade things out, uh, it, just a whole other things. But we're going to get into that more in the next uh, episode, too. I figured out how to share my other mic. Oh, oh yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so I kind of lucked into this and it was exactly the effect they wanted, but I do think it's a nice way to to sort of zoom into something that's, you know, not formatted for a slide. Yeah. Um, and use that, you know, great data from your paper in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. We got five minutes left. Um, if there's any questions from anybody, anybody stuck on any problems, we always ask every week, but nobody answers. <laughs> nobody has. <laughs> I know people have problems. Uh, so, uh, you know, if, but if you do, um, if you're stuck on anything, certainly reach out, um, hit that Slack channel that we have um, here at Gladstone um, with any kind of questions or want a little help on something, just, you know, uh, just to get over a little hump or anything. Um, you know, Slack is great for that because we can just have a quick little conversation or sidebar about it. Um, or uh, we can save that very lengthy explanation of it um, for the next episode and feature it on there. And um, yeah, so take that option up. Otherwise, as I said, already advertised, we're gonna be doing a little bit more in-depth animation next go round. So be sure to check that out. And um, yeah, anything else, Tammy? No. You're gonna be so. back in Seattle. Yeah. I miss you, but um, it was nice having you here. Yeah, it was really great to be here. Yeah. Right, well. Thanks everyone for coming. Yeah, thanks all three. <laughs> That's so good. I know. I know this is a great resource, and uh, and and we get a kick out of doing it and um, and posting it after online and everything too. So, um, but yep. Tell everyone, uh, uh, spread the word, and um, we'll be around next time. All right. Sharing my thoughts. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Bye.